John Gosden. And there's this race in 2020. Slots into stall five. Mile and a quarter they start on the descent to Swinley Bottom, leaving the stalls and state of rest it is. And Lord North, the blindfold, the blindfold was laid off Lord North and he's given them about half a dozen length start. So a dramatic beginning, the blindfold seemed to be removed late and effectively his race may already have been run. A state of rest lead Chariar through the first furlong. Baybridge races in third, Grand Glory in fourth and Lord North just trying to gradually recover. There's about three or four lengths behind them. As unpestered, state of rest, Chariar sitting passively in second place at the moment as they make the turn right at the far end of the race course and having run downhill for the first quarter mile, from now on for the next half, they climb steadily and out in the lead, state of rest has the advantage. Chariar's just been moved off the rails by Christian de Buro, but is still sitting quietly in second place. Racing in third is Bay Bridge, completing the first quartet is Grand Glory and last of all is Lord North as they continue to make their way steadily uphill. Stay of rest with Chariot just moving a shade closer now about half a length outside the leader Baybridge getting a nice toe in in third Grand Glory has been joined by Lord North who's recovered some of that ground lost at the start but still as they pass halfway is at the back of the pack state of rest chain cross still rather unpestered Chariot in second Baybridge in third no change in the play as yet Lord North off this steady pace has been able to close and gets into fourth place with Grand Glory as they make the turn for home state of rest with Chariot still breathing down his neck Baybridge poised to angle out off the home bend as the pace just begins to lift. Lord North is now feeling those exertions of having to make up the ground. Japan poised with Chariot on the outside of State of Rest for Ireland. Baybridge now the moment of truth up in grade. Lord North is still trying valiantly to stay on, but it's State of Rest who has the lead. Chariot beginning to come under pressure as Baybridge down the outside tries to run down State of Rest. A furlong and a half to go in the Prince of Wales is State of Rest still out in front. Baybridge with a for a length to find and State of Rest at the moment is holding Baybridge on the run to the line. State of Rest driven out for Shane Cross and a Royal Aska winner for Joseph O'Brien won the Prince of Wales's under a peach. In second was Baybridge close for third. Sherry are being closed on by Grand Glory and Lord North finished where he started at the back of the pack. Left alone by the Japanese runner was able to climb the hill, fill the tank and off the final bend. Had enough to repel Baybridge. State of Rest it's been a long wait for Joseph O'Brien as a trainer. He rode winners at Royal Ascot. This is his first as a trainer. Shane Cross is first as well. And he'll ride few better. Third place is going to go to Grand Glory just ahead of Shariar. So still the wait goes on for Japan. Royal Ascot doesn't quite appear in the calendar at such a convenient place as some of the other overseas meetings they have managed success at. But State of Rest waited in front. Had enough to repel Bay Bridge. Fine ride, Shane Cross. That's absolutely right, isn't it? As Ruby said, took control from the front. How good a ride was it, Johnny? Brilliant, brilliant ride, Ed. He jumped from the front, he went forward. He got no pressure. He got no pressure whatsoever all the way around. He only started up in the ante at the three, the three furlong pole. By then, he was gone. Brian, Ryan Moore came out, he angled out, he had every chance. But the speed horse won today, Ed. The speed horse, the horse that's after winning over shorter trips. Loads of speed, got them a couple of lengths, and Ryan, uh, all, tr as, as hard as that's, he tried. That's apt. Absolutely stolen up on the front end. What a brilliant ride that is from Shane. Fantastic. Under maximum pressure, gone out there, taken the race by the scruff of the neck, cantered around on the front. Often, when this horse has been asked to go into a battle, he often comes out in front. He, he's super, super tough. And isn't that right with Shane? Didn't he miss out on the St. Ledger winner? Didn't he get, he, he, he had a time where he was, you know, a little bit unlucky with one or two group one winners going the other way against the grain, if you like, and then he just sat quiet, kept biding his time. Talk about repaying the boss. Yeah, well, Joseph has got a couple of young, really, really top class riders. None as strong as this guy. Big guy, works hard at his weight. And listen, this will be extra special. And Joseph, to have his first, <laughs> first Royal Ascot winner, Group one, the biggest one, of the week, one of the big ones of the week. Yeah, and he's won races as a trainer already at his tender age. Melbourne Cups and all sorts of big races, but this will mean a lot. First winner at Royal Ascot for the trainer. Ten years ago, won this race as a jockey. Now he's come back 
and won it as a trainer. Big moment for Shane Cross too, his first Royal Ascot winner and the State of Rest partnership and the winner will now be paraded in front of the stands. He's just so tough, this horse. A four-time Group 1 winner now from just 12 runs. He won the pre gane then was third to Alan Kerr in the Tassels Gold Cup. And now he's got Eclipse and all sorts of races on his it, agenda. It was Covid. It was Covid, the reason why he wasn't able to come over and ride Joseph St. Ledger winner where Tom Marquand stepped into the, the breach. And, um, well, I'll tell you what, having to sit at home and wait and watch that, he's obviously thought about coming round here on a big occasion. What about that? Some, some resume, isn't it? If you think, uh, you know, a Saratoga derby, a Cox Plate, and now the Prince of Wales to boot as well. Led up by MJ Doran. We'll look back at more drama at the start this week in a moment. But this is about the winner. And Ollie. Yes, yeah, Shane, firstly, a huge congratulations on behalf of all of us for riding your first Royal Ascot winner. Did you always plan to, to make the running on him? Because it was an excellent ride. Thanks very much, Ali. Um, yeah, look, the plan beforehand and speaking to Joseph was a small field and we'll uncomplicate things. And from our draw, I thought it was probably the best possible way of winning. And, uh, you know, fair play to this horse. He's, he's done it all. He's showed, he showed what it's all about today. So, uh, just over the middle. It's amazing when they come in this tunnel when you hear that round of applause. A real appreciation for him and there's an appreciation for this horse all around the world given what he's achieved. Of course, of course, you know, in the space of the last 12 months he's, he's done a lot and has to be credit to him, David looks after him every day and Jim, you know, it wouldn't be done without them, so yeah, over the moon. I'll have a quick word with MJ in a moment, but just finally Shane, to ride a Royal Ascot winner, what does this mean to you personally? <laughs> Dream, you know, an absolute dream. To get here, to get here and per participate is a huge thing. But to be riding a, a horse like this into in, in the top class races, that is a dream. There's no way to describe it. Shane, well done. I'll just grab a word with you, MJ. You're about to lead in the, the Prince of Wales winner. How special is that to you at all the yard? Unbelievable. I'm delighted for a horse because. I don't think he genuinely gets the credit he deserves for what he's done around the world for the last year, so I'm just happy for the horse and everyone at home. And the man on top, so it's brilliant. I'll be amazed if he doesn't get the credit after that. Well done. Oh, thanks. <laughs> And this is the moment you treasure, isn't it, when you're walking in on your first Royal Ascot winner? Unbelievable moment, Ed. You'll never forget it. As I said, top, top young rider, um, attached to Joseph O'Brien, works hard his weight, he's big, but he works hard. And it just shows you if you work hard that the results do come, and no bigger than today. The five to one winner of the Prince of Wales Estates, our group one today, the first million pound prize at the Royal Meeting, goes to State of Rest. Shane Cross, all smiles. Likewise, Joseph and the State of Rest Partnership going all around the world with this horse who won at Royal Ascot. For the first time for Joseph at 5-1 to one with a much bigger tote dividend on the right there, the World Pool. I imagine that's because round the world the Japanese would have been backing their horse, Shariah. Hence, he's gone off a bigger price on the World Pool, paying £8.65. The question, I've got to ask again this week, Jason, what on earth happened at the start? Yeah, now, Frankie de Tori had his hand when we looked on the side view. He had his hand up on the, the blind. He goes to pull it, and, of course, sometimes it's tucked into the cheek pieces of the horse's bridle. And de Tori has then gone for the pull. It's not come out, and when it does, it's all too late. Obviously, the horse can't see the gates opening. That's an absolute shocker, that is, isn't it? One of those nightmare moments where it's tucked in too tight, Got caught on the bridle, no chance. Strange race, you know, I, I was expecting maybe a bit more from the Japanese horse. He never pressured, he won over a mile and a half in Dubai. I would have liked to have seen him being ridden a bit more aggressively, even coming up the hill. He still sat in the box seat, letting the winner have a freebie. Um, so, you know, he's, he's, he's a stayer who didn't really get to play to his f true strengths today, but 
And do you think do you think Ryan is following the Japanese runner, thinking that's the one who's going to take me into the race? Meanwhile, Shane is saying, thank you very much. I will take this by the scruff of the neck. Well, you could see Ryan at the, at the five out. He was kind of moving out, and he was hoping that the Japanese horse would put more pressure on, because he knows they're going slow. The winner, or the horse in front, has a good turn of foot, and it, it, that's the way it played out. He just he just got those couple of lengths on him, and fair play to the horse. And he's it's tough. He's genuine, and he really ran those last new two. team have bought into him fairly fairly recently. I think in his stallion career is already organised. He's going to shuttle between Ireland and Australia. He's delivered on the big stage. What an expensive error on this stage with Lord North.